The new Justice League. Green Arrow, Zatanna, Hawkman. There's a new one showing up every day. They're calling themselves superheroes. Well then, I guess they'll call us supervillains. Come now, Professor Ivo. I have a map to make, and you have things to build. Going to die today. Ah! I can't let it be for nothing. That's how I live most of my life. For nothing. For no one. For no one but me. I never believed I'd amount to anything worthwhile. I played right into what the world said about me. But I could prove everyone wrong. I can do better. I've been trying to. Is he still breathing? I can hear him. Our creator wants him dead. I'm going to die today. But not yet. There's only one Justice League. And you control it, Director Waller. I don't control anything, Colonel Trevor. I'm the only League's official point of contact with Argus. Because they requested I be replaced, and you were all too eager to jump in. We need a liaison that doesn't have a wonder horse in the race. Argus was established. By me. By the United States. To support, investigate, and if necessary, combat superhuman activity that poses a threat to national security. Why do you talk to me like I'm an idiot? Because lately you've been acting like one. Your time with the team wasn't exactly easy, was it? Possessed by Starro, physically shattered by Despero, and most recently almost beaten to death by Mr. Graves. You weren't this invested in work before you met Diana. I was the one who brought her to the screwed up world. The least I could do was look out for her. Because you fell in love with her right there on that beach? And you thought she fell in love with you? Can I go now? You always get too close to the people you work with. I have to make it work. We need a Justice League we can count on. A league that isn't hiding 22,000 miles above us in a satellite. A league that can help other superhumans or stop them if necessary. And to ultimately take on this highly confidential mission you have planned. A mission you know I'd never go along with. You're still trying to protect the League, but your loyalty is misplaced, Steve. They aren't loyal to you. She isn't. But believe it or not, this is me trying to be. I know you better than anyone, Steve. Probably even better than Diana. You are the best person to be their team leader and mentor. But if you say no, you say no. And I will have to find someone else to do this. There's nothing that's going to stop this team from happening. And there's nothing you can say to get me to agree to be a part of this. All right. Then how about I show you something instead? This image was recovered off the computers in the Justice League International Vacated Headquarters. Well? What? Who Diana spends time with and how isn't my business? This isn't about you, Steve. It's what got everyone above me so concerned. You want to keep protecting Diana, don't you? Tell me more. This image was uploaded by Booster Gold. Seconds later, he vanished and we have no idea why. We have our best temporal specialist searching for him. 
I hope you're not talking about Kronos. Don't avoid the real problem, Steve. The ramifications of these two together, the two most powerful beings on the planet, is unfathomable. Wonder Woman's always wanted to change the world. What does Superman do when he starts to think the way she does? Or what happens when this ends between them? Because you know as well as I do, something like this can only end badly. What about their children? You're getting a little ahead of yourself. We might not like it, but we have to take these kinds of precautions. I know. I'm glad you've agreed to be a part of this, Steve. Here's your team. Folders and files? If it's on a computer, Cyborg will find it. We do everything the old-fashioned way. Just like our first recruit. You've heard of Hawkman. That guy just blew his head off! Hey, you! Hello, Beth. His clashes with the authorities have been escalating. That's good for us. Hawkman will accept our invitation under the pretense that the U.S. absolves his current record and grants him diplomatic immunity to continue carrying on his hunt however he likes. Diplomatic immunity? Katar Hull is a police officer from the planet Thanagar, hunting alien fugitives and the humans working for them on Earth. Quite the cover story, but we still don't know why he's really here. My name's not Biff. It will be for my official arrest records. What are you talking about? The, the guy who wouldn't give me his wallet, he put up a fight. He asked for it. This is Hawkman, recording the capture and judgment of Thanagarian Fugitive 13, Bith Rock. Wanted for his crimes against the people of Thanagar, specifically the trafficking of countless women and children. I'm not whoever you think I am! There's one other thing. He prefers using maces and swords to ray guns and laser rifles. Somebody help! <laughs> We have no idea why. Hi, Anata. Yes, my love. Karera wa nichou mae de mimashita two blocks ago. Huh? Hold on, Waller. You can't honestly expect me to train and organize people like Hawkman and Katana. They're killers. The rest of the world doesn't really know who they are yet, Steve. We have a PR plan. A PR plan? Are you kidding me? I thought the JLA was going to be an inspiration to other heroes. Tatsu Toro is an assassin. She was. Katana was born in Tokyo, but she spent the last few years in America, tracking down the people who killed her husband. Maceo Yamashiro, who, in his prime, was considered the world's deadliest assassin by the U.S. government. Uh, uh, uh. Now, Kaitana and Deathstroke vie for that title, figuratively speaking. And what makes you think Little Miss Slice and Dice will join the JLA? We know how to help Kaitana find the people she's looking for. So in exchange for her services, We'll provide revenge. Hi, their souls will belong to you. In the words of the great Lando Calrissian, this deal is getting worse all the time. These people were specifically chosen. You chose powers, not people, Amanda. That's my role here, to find the necessary physical attributes. Case in point, this is Cisco Ramon. His picture's out of focus. They always are. Help! I just got robbed! Sisko was caught in the event horizon of a parademon's boom tube during Dark Seed's invasion five years ago. One of his brothers died pulling him free. I'm on it! Since then, sisko has been out of sync with the rest of the world. Stop right there! I'm sorry! I won't ever do it again! Man. So, 
and saved a Snickers bar from an eight-year-old? Actually, I went back and gave the sword a dollar. The kid looks so sad. And now you're off to join the Justice League? Yeah. You do see the disconnect I do, right? Are you sure there isn't another vibe out there running around? I checked. You know, there are dozens, maybe hundreds of people with superpowers. So, why me? Maybe they see potential in you that you and I don't see. Thanks a lot, Dante. What's our brothers for? Five is only 18, Amanda. He has no experience. He barely has powers. He doesn't just create vibrations, Steve. He's a living epicenter for vibrational frequencies. He can see and sense anything from another dimension or reality. I can read. And with training, Vibe will be able to sever the ties that people might have to dimensional power. I just don't want this kid getting killed. I believe in him. So should you. My balls is shallow. Breeding quick. It's 40 degrees out, and I'm sweating. It's a blood loss. I'm going into hypervolemic shock. I'm turned around. I'm lost. Again. I know I don't deserve it, but I'm asking anyway. Leave me out of here. <coughs> Not because I have to live, but because the people following me need to be stopped. I wait for a streak of lightning or a bird to fly by. Look, there she is! There's no other superhuman out there with higher Q scores. What the hell is a Q-score? Yesterday, you saved an elementary school bus from falling off an overpass. The day before, you stopped an attack on a veteran's hospital. And Ellen recently called you the answer to Lindsay Lohan. Oh, I don't think that's fair. From what I've heard, she's had it pretty rough. I've been very fortunate. You've probably at least heard her name. She's not a film star, but I would treat her like one. Star Girl, can I have your autograph? Me too. We love you, Star Girl. In less than a year, she saved over 400 people from various accidents, superhuman incidents, and natural disasters. The people trust her and love her, and with her solar-powered cosmic staff, which we believe is one of the most powerful weapons on the planet, she could take down a small army while signing her headshots. So she's perfect? No one's perfect. Don't worry, I've got you. Because of what happened to the previous owner of the cosmic staff, we had her under surveillance for a while both in her star girl identity and her civilian one, high school student Courtney Whitmore. Things are apparently normal, except at night. She leaves her bedroom lights on. Why? Pemberton. Our observations, we suspect it's night terrors. Well, the psychological profile should reveal more. If anything's going to make star girl smile fade, it's her role on the team. I doubt she'll go along with what you've outlined here. Courtney won't have a choice. We know who her father is. Pat Dugan? Her biological father. You're a real peach, Amanda. Who else are we dealing with? Martian Manhunter? You really have lost your mind. His power levels are unmatched, and you've worked with him before. He left the League after a drag-out fight. If I know anything about the Manhunter, it's that he's impossible to predict. Or trust. And this one, Amanda? The new Green Lantern? He... Was arrested. Not convicted. Not yet. Green Arrow? I thought this was a given. You two have met over beers. Yeah, and you've had eyes on us every time. It's my job. Arrow's skill set... Is okay. And Queen's heart is in the right place, I think. But he's not the right candidate for the spot, which is the most important spot on the JLA. If you really want this to work, you need someone else. Who do you have in mind?
Hello, Miss Kyle. Don't be alarmed. I'm only here to talk. My name's Colonel... I know who you are. I saw you sitting in the dark before I decided to invite myself in. You're Wonder Woman's boy toy. Ex-boy toy. So you're available. <clears throat> Looks like I win. You could. You could finally win against her. Uh, who? Selena Kyle. Selena Kyle. I am Selena Kyle, Wonder Boy. That's no secret. I'm not talking about your identity, Miss Kyle. I'm talking about the woman who stole it. You're talking nonsense. I registered the Swede in your name because I knew it was only a matter of time before it got on your radar. And you came running. Her enemies came after you. You almost lost your life because of her. I know her real name. She said yes. Catwoman's an out-and-out -out criminal, Trevor. She should be a part of my suicide squad, not the Justice League of America. So we keep her out of the public eye. If you want someone who can take on Batman, you need someone who knows him as well as I know Wonder Woman. This isn't like the Suicide Squad. These people are not as easily replaced. So we're good with this group, right? Yes. These are the men and women who are going to take down the Justice League, if it ever comes to that. In the meantime, we'll be doing our best to protect this country. You think you can forge them into a well-oiled machine? Probably not. Yes? Agent Fed is in the debriefing room to download you and Simon Baz. Fed didn't bring the lantern in with him? I, uh, I'm not sure, Director Waller. Fed just got in from Detroit. I'll be right there. Fix the attitude, Steve. And get Etta and your staff on Martian Manhunter. Find him. Public perception of the Justice League is at a low because of Atlantis' assault. We introduce the JLA to the world tomorrow. You can come out, John. How did you know I was here? Because you always show up when people start talking about you. I assume you heard everything. Yes. You can count me in. If your job is getting these people to work together, you're going to need all the help you can get. I don't need help, John. Don't lie to me, Steve. We've known each other too long. And the telepathic inhibitors Argus has equipped you and its agents with don't block out someone like me. Meaning you could read my mind right now? I know why you're really doing this, but if Waller or one of these government lackeys even thinks about making a move against me, I will erase his mind. And then I will erase the mind of every person in this building, including yours. They'll give me no other option. Do we have an understanding? Yes. I'm glad. Yeah, you look it. Colonel Trevor, you need to come to the infirmary right now. He's back, but he's in bad shape. He was lost in the Kilder Forest for days. He's lucky his beacon finally kicked in. Etta thinks there was something interfering with it. They're not sure he's going to make it. Hey! You can't come in here! This man is going to die! I need to talk to him before he does. Trevor! <sighs> Last time... I go anywhere without my arrows. The Dark Hunter. 
knew it wasn't going to be a good cover for long, but they were on to me. Fast. Who call themselves the secret society. And the guy heading it up. He's crashing! Who is he? Who's calling the shots? Queen. Green Arrow! Hello? Whoever you are, wherever you've taken me, I'll grind you up and feed you to my crows. That's a pleasant notion, Professor Crane. Huh. But save your threats for those who wish you ill. Who are you? What do you last remember before waking up here? I was on my way to Arkham. There was an explosion. A detonation. Yes. And then I rescued you. If you're ever in distress again, if you're captured or in danger, you can contact me and I'll offer my assistance as I did today. Why? In exchange for my services, one day, one day soon, I will call upon you and I ask you to answer that call without question. And if I say no? Then I'm afraid your tenure as a terror tyrant of Gotham City will be up. I'm not! Frightened of death. But you like to be frightened, don't you? Isn't that why you created your fear gas in the first place? Until the potency on you wasn't what it used to be. Yet you still craved to feel that fear. Huh. That's why you stopped using your chemicals on yourself and started using them on an innocence to get the big scary Batman to chase you. You're afraid of the Batman, and that taste of fear is so sweet. But I'm bringing something even more frightening than the Batman into this world. And you could be on the front lines to witness it. You could be more terrified than you've ever been in your life. Tell me, please, what is it? What could scare me like that? Join us and find out. We created a background, rap sheet, even fingerprint and DNA records that would match up with Queen's if he got caught. So we never thought they'd figure out the Dark Hunter was actually Green Arrow. I'm hoping it's bad luck, and not a leak from inside the building. He was offline for almost 12 hours before he picked his signal back up. They found him on the edge of the Kildare Forest in Northumberland, England. Not much before they started surgery. All we know for sure is that the group he infiltrated called themselves the Secret Society. This is the perfect test for the Justice League of America. Find the secret society and take them apart. I haven't even started training the JLA, Amanda. This is the training, Steve. If they can go up against a secret society of supervillains, then they can go up against Superman, Wonder Woman, and the rest of the Justice League. We don't know anything about the secret society, Amanda. This could be unbelievably dangerous for a group of people who have never fought alongside one another. We don't have time to teach these people how to ride a bike with training wheels. I'm only asking you to wait until Queen wakes up so we can hear what he knows. You take them into the field as soon as the Pentagon signs off on my request to go into action. Trial by fire. You were always good at it. And you were always concerned about the well-being of the people fighting with you. Until you traded your fatigues for a business suit. Now all you care about is getting the job done to move up the political power chain. You sold out. You're the man you used to fight so desperately against. I'm the woman who's trying to protect this country. However I have to. This is a different world than it used to be. A crazy world. You follow orders, just like I do, Steve, or I'll find someone who does. You have 15 minutes to get them to the press conference and another 15 to prepare for mission debrief. Are we clear? We are clear, Director Waller. You got there too early. They asked us to be here at 10, Dante. You've been there since 9.30, Cisco. So? 
So you gotta play this right, man. Strong in last. I bet Batman always comes in last. It's cool. You don't want to look desperate. I think it's a little late for that. You seen that uniform they gave me? Ah, <sighs> maybe I should quit being Vine before I start. To go do what instead? Anything but be a sucky Justice Leaguer. Hi, I'm Star Girl. Star Girl? Dude, are you serious? Hi, uh, I was just talking to my brother. He's a big fan. <laughs> and you are? I'm Vibe. Sorry. I'm kind of overwhelmed by all this, to be honest. Joining the Justice League of America. Um, meeting you and, uh... I've never been to Washington, D.C. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? I was here for a benefit a few months ago. We raised over a million dollars to help with the hurricane recovery. <laughs> I can't wait to see how much good we can all accomplish together. My friends call me Jean Katana. I do not mean to be dismissive, Martian Manhunter, but I am not here to make friends. C can I have your autograph? However, For my brother. I will cut anyone who attempts to harm my new teammates. That is appreciated. <gasps> There's a green lantern on the team? How cool! Whose dad is this? Captain Adam, maybe? Catwoman, amigo. My eyes are up here, sweetheart. Huh? Uh, I know. But does anyone know what Catwoman is doing here? She's a criminal. <laughs> no offense. None taken, Angel. But consider this me turning over a new leaf. A whole new tree of them, in fact. I'm a good guy now. <laughs> hmm. Ah. Uh, hey. Hawkman, right? Are you okay? Why? You're covered in blood. It's not my blood. You'll need to get cleaned up before the press conference, Hawkman. What press conference? The President of the United States has offered to introduce the Justice League of America to the world. We're going to meet the President? That's so exciting! I would have voted for him if I were old enough. You didn't tell me I'd be working with children, Trevor. I'm glad you're a fan, Stargirl, because you'll be speaking on behalf of the team. Me? Why me? People like to listen to you. You'll be given your speech on the way to the Capitol building. Everyone else will keep quiet and smile for the cameras. Except for you, Catwoman. Until your criminal record is absolved, which depends on your performance here, you'll remain our unofficial member. That's a shame. I'm extremely photogenic. What about Green Lantern? The new Green Lantern is off planet. How Jordan quit the Justice League anyway, Amanda? Jordan's very close to them, even Batman. It's only a matter of time before he comes back. We need to be fully prepared. And Simon Baz is the only Lantern we'll be able to put on a leash. Green Lantern will be joining us as soon as he's able to, Stargirl. Catwoman, try not to get into trouble while we're... For luck. Don't do that again. Tell the president I said hi. Let's see. Steve's license. Thirty dollars. A coupon for Chinese takeout. And... I'm sorry. It would never work. When I was young, my dad told me the story of John Chapman. While most settlers couldn't see the forest for the trees, John Chapman did nothing but. This true pioneer walked barefoot across young America, planting seeds. Seeds that would grow into apple trees, and those trees into orchards. Orchards that defined a new America. A vegetarian, humanitarian, and a friend to all who met him. John Chapman 
shape this great nation with a bag full of seeds and a heart full of hope. Our country has a long history of everyday American heroes, like Mr. Chapman. We can only hope that someday history will call us heroes too. Sir, Scarecrow's been returned to Gotham. Did they recover our intruder? No, he was picked up by Argus on the southern edge. I thought it was best not to engage. You thought wrong, Ivo. Can you access what Green Arrow knows about the Secret Society? There is still some cerebral edema that could leave the information I retrieve limited or fractured. But yes, I can do that. Are there any behavioral issues that should be addressed while I'm in here? What? No. Read his mind. Don't change it. You haven't really done that, have you? Not to anyone I know, at least. I'm in. But his subconscious is trying to fight me. Stay back. I know who you are. I made a fire. I'm not here to hurt you, Mr. Queen. But I need to know who already did. Ah! It's all about me. It was. Until I lost everything on that island. The island remade me. I remade me. I wanted to be something more. A member of the Justice League. I put on another mask. I started posing as a criminal and asking questions. I found out someone was looking for a thief to pull off an impossible job. I wanted to know what they were after. So I tried to be that thief. Until I finally got on their radar. But they figured out who I really was. You wanted to find us and you have. Congratulations. They missed the arrowhead and the sleeve lining. I escaped my bonds. And ran. Stop him! Batman! This is like missiles. Skin like steel. I thought I was going to die. Before my life had meaning. That's all I could retrieve without risking any damage. Batman was there. Get the team together. What team? Who are you talking to? And why am I still wearing my mask? I thought you'd want your identity protected from the medical staff. <coughs> it only works if I have the hood on too. You just said something about a team. I've put one together to take the secret society down. I thought we were working together on this. I thought we were going to expose this thing ourselves. And we did. But now this is bigger than you or me. It's going to take a Justice League to confront it. One I've been assigned to lead, and one I'm afraid you can't be a part of. What? You asked me to be a part of something. You didn't say what, but if you're forming another Justice League... It's full up. Full up? There are only so many spots. These are the rules. Director Waller... The woman who replaced you as head of Vargas is giving you rules? And you're following them? So you sold out? I'm not a sellout. You get a place back on the Justice League, and you fall back in line with bureaucracy. I'm the guy who rebels against authority. What the hell are you talking about, Steve? Now, you are the authority. Everyone follow my lead. Stay close. We'll try and retrace Green Arrow's steps. We could have used Stargirl to light the way. She's handling something else for us, Katana. If the secret society is hiding in these woods, why don't we knock down some trees, make some noise, and get their attention? Because we don't know how many are in this little group, Hawkman. That's why we left our jet a mile outside the forest. We don't want to attract any attention. Katana, can you... Where'd Katana go? A secret society of supervillains. If there even were such a thing, certainly I would have heard it whispered about. I've interrogated dozens of superhuman criminals, Catwoman, none of whom have heard of it. Their recruitment must be extremely selective. And what are we supposed to do when we find this selective group? Arrest them? Jean, can you get a lock on Katana? Find out where she is and what she's doing? 
I... I can't. Something's blocking my telepathy. Everyone, regroup and fall. Uh, something just flew by. Steve, you shouldn't have come here. Use it up and throw it in the trash. I guess that's the American way. But so are comebacks. That's what this is all about. We represent the best and brightest heroes our great country has to offer. The JLA have come together under the amazing leadership of military hero Colonial Stephen Trevor to serve and protect the world as no other team can. We thank you for the opportunity. And God bless America. Ugh, God, Mom, please don't record it. It sounds so... can. No, I didn't write it. Yes, of course I have the cosmic staff. I won't let it out of my sight. Even if someone did get a hold of it, the staff wouldn't... Because! This is my chance to help people on a whole other level. Isn't that what Pat's always lecturing me about? Uh, look. Uh, <laughs> I've gotta go, Mom. Tell... You know who? I'm fine. And stop worrying. Ugh, oh, I hear him back there. Ah, oh, love you too. We have a few more hours of press interviews scheduled, Stargirl. These are your talking points on the bright future of America. First, you write me a speech about Johnny Appleseed, and now you have me talking points on America? I'm a pretty good speaker without these Director Waller. But I can't use them anyway. Trevor's asked us back to the JLA meeting room. We're going out on mission. The League already left, Stargirl. What? Where did they go? Someplace too dangerous for you. Too dangerous? If something happened to Stargirl out in the field, it would be a PR disaster for the JLA. I risk my life every day. I'm not staying here to talk to reporters. Yes, you are. That's your role on the team. You'll be our face to the public. You'll assure the world the JLA is everything we've said it is. They'll believe you. I am not a cheerleader. I am an active member of the JLA. And if not, huh, I'm leaving. You're not going anywhere, Courtney Whitmore. How did you know my name? We know who you are. We know who your dad is. And we know what he did. If you don't do what we say, I'll have him answer for it. So read the damn talking points. D Diana. I'm Batman and Superman. What are they doing here? Let Colonel Turner go, Wonder Woman. You're going to kill him. It's gas. Cut. What? <clears throat> Diana, I, I... You shouldn't have come here, Steve. Huh. I must have got them us. Diana. <laughs> Obviously, these things are not human. Can still be broken, Manhunter. There goes that handsome face. The Justice League. Versus the Justice League. Vibe. I'm right here, Mr. Stabber. Uh, don't know, I mean. I don't know what that smoke was that Batman or Robot Batman threw out, but it kind of burns my throat. I think I should- Get down! When we are in mid-battle, you listen to me, but keep your eyes on the aggressors at all times. You got that? 
Yeah, yes sir. These things will kill you if given the chance, and they don't seem to be stopped easily. One's missing a head and still fighting. I know this probably isn't the greatest time to admit, but a bag of chips got stuck on the vending machine back at the JLA headquarters. What the hell are you talking about? I tried to knock them loose with a long level blast, but I ended up vibrating the machine apart. It's in pieces in the hallway. So maybe I can do the same thing with these machines. Wait! The League's in your line of fire. Shut it down. I... Sorry! I'm sorry. I thought I could aim a little better. Learn how to. Hey, give the kids some cred, Hawkman. Vibe saved us a little sweat and tears. A souvenir for the cat cave. Put the sword down, Katana. It's not me, Trevor. It's my husband within the sword. He doesn't trust her. <laughs> you married a sword? Oh, well, that explains a lot. We came to this forest to find the secret society. Yet as soon as we enter, we are ambushed. Someone sold us out. Someone is working with the secret society. She did disappear right before the attack. Everything I said about giving you credit a minute ago, I take it back, Vibe, you suck. A mind scan reveals Catwoman hasn't told anyone about the JLA, Tatsu. And she is as in the dark as we are on who the secret society is. Don't make me force you to release her. As strong as you might be, Manhunter. My sword can still cut you. But we trust you. Tell your husband to hit the sheath and cool off. After dismantling those androids, we searched every square inch of that forest. The only thing we found was a shingle and some broken glass in the middle of an open field. A shingle and some broken glass. A slate shingle, dating back to the early 1800s. And the shards we recovered were from a stained glass window. I've got the puzzler trying to reassemble them now, to see if the image means anything. So what happened to the supervillain mansion that Green Arrow escaped from? If the Justice League Dark's headquarters can move, so could this one. But I do have some bad news, Amanda. This was good news. Robotics analyzed what was left of those superhero machines Vibe took apart. Dr. Larvin's nearly certain they're the work of Professor Evo, meaning the reports of his self-inflicted death were wrong. If there's a mind that's more dangerous than Evo's out there, I don't know it. We should alert Dr. Stone. No, Steve. You tell Stone. He tells his son, Cyborg. Cyborg tells the Justice League. This is our mission. All of it. You have any other ideas on how to find the secret society? Yes, but what I'm going to suggest is going to involve breaking a few laws. Which ones? Despite our little clash with Evo's toys, the society still doesn't know who was trespassing into their territory. We have Vibe to thank for that. Me? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? The robotics lab recovered partial data on the optical and audio recordings the three androids made during their last minutes of operation. Thanks to your internal frequency, Vibe, you can't be photographed or recorded clearly. Nor can anyone in your immediate proximity, apparently. That could come in handy. Too bad you wouldn't fit in my pocket. If I had pockets. Even if these androids were broadcasting back to Evo, even if the society does suspect it was the Justice League of America in their backyard, they're like everyone else outside this building. They have no idea Catwoman's working for us. With you, Colonel. Now don't keep a girl waiting. What's the plan? We need to get someone on the inside of this society. Someone who won't raise suspicion. Someone who isn't lying about being a criminal. Flattery will get you everywhere, Colonel. The Museum of Natural History is holding an exhibit on superhuman culture. You're going to break in and steal a Martian artifact that Jean's donated for this little exercise, called the Scepter of the State. But this is so pretty. <sighs> K. 
Catwoman triggering a simple perimeter alarm. Well, if they buy that, it serves them right. She's moving north up 10th Street, across the rooftops. Setting off an alarm is embarrassing, but being slow enough so I'm caught in a police searchlight is downright humiliating. It's necessary, Selena. Catwoman, you are under arrest. Put your hands in the air. Oh, come on now, boys. We can't make it that easy. What's she doing? I thought you said she was supposed to give up. Damn it, Catwoman. We have to make it look convincing, don't we, Trevor? I never simply lie down and give up. Unless it's Batman, but even then... <sighs> you stepped in it now, didn't you? You against the whole Justice League of America. Now do us both a favor and hand over to Bagdoll. Doll? I'm nobody's doll, you... Do not engage, Catwoman. What the hell is Robin Hood doing here? Potentially making a mess. Manhunter, go distract the chopper somehow. Just get their attention away from Catwoman and Green Arrow. Hawkman, stop Arrow, however you have to. Not much of a suit to pit against the wall, but a net arrow should do it a- <laughs> What the hell are you doing, Hawkman? You want to keep running. No, I'm bored. Wait a second, this... this was all for show? We're in the middle of an important mission, Arrow. Great, now, so am I. I told you... Sure, you did. You don't want me. But now, I'm telling you, I'll keep my mouth shut that you're working with Catwoman if I get to join whatever the hell team this is. Sure about this, Selena? Please, Steve. I go in, stir up some trouble, ask about rumors of a society of villains, drone on about how fun that would be, then break out and let the society come to me. Then I bring you to them. This is Arkham Asylum we're talking about. I don't care where you put me away. I'll be out in 24 hours. <laughs> Okay, I admit it. That was a little harder than I anticipated. We've been pushing the story of your escape across all news outlets, and we've made an official statement that the JLA are after you in full force. Oh, all for me? If the society is listening, they'll know you're in trouble, and they'll... <sighs> oh, that signal. Batman? No. Batman's not here lucky for you. I'm Signal Man, this is Blockbuster. My, aren't you a big- <laughs> No, Blockbuster. He wants her unharmed. <sighs> Trevor? Trevor, if you can still hear me... I think I'm in. Hello? Arthur, we need you to come in. Arthur, are you there? This isn't what I expected. I'm strapped to a chair in a bare room with concrete walls. No windows, but I think I see a door. You asked me to sit tight when I got here, Stevie, but if you can hear me, which I highly doubt, there's a change in plans. And you know what they say about the cat. Oh, curiosity and all that. I mean, come on now. Who doesn't want to see what kind of place a secret society of supervillain hangs their mind-altering hats in? 
Mm, meow. What exactly am I looking at? The only clue we have on finding Catwoman in this secret society. Green Arrow confiscated this off Multiplex, one of Firestorm's superhuman playmates, a few weeks ago. The inscription on the front reads, Odurant, Doom, Matuant. It's Latin, Dr. Light. Yes, I know. Let me hate as long as they fear. I suppose that's an appropriate motto for low-level criminals like Multiplex. There's a picture of the burning skull in the back, with more words. Eternius Malum. Forever evil. Surely you didn't call me in here at three in the morning to translate Latin, Director Waller. No, Dr. Light. This might look like a silver dollar, but it's also some kind of communication device. Multiplex was using it to talk to somebody after I played Target with one of his duplicates. Then, something flew in, hit me hard, allowing Multiplex to escape. I'm betting it was the robots you took to the scrapyard tonight. I told you to wait in the meeting room. I got bored watching Hawkman flex his wings and Katana whisper to her sword. And don't get me started on Martian Manhunter. The guy gives me the creeps. He stares at you with those beady black eyes. Makes you feel like he knows your deepest, darkest secrets. And he's judging you for them. No wonder the other Justice League kicked him to the curb. What's Green Arrow doing here? You chose to replace him with Catwoman. He found out and used it to blackmail his way onto the team. Consider him additional backup in case Selina needs it, which she probably will. I'm happy to assist you in the Justice League in any way you need, but if you could explain to me, please, why exactly am I here? The coin is emitting a frequency that we haven't been able to identify, but we have been able to replicate. When we went to the Kielder Forest, communications were completely out, but we suspect there must be a loophole for this frequency. We think this is how they talk to one another. We built a device in Catwoman's goggles to emit the same frequency, so we could pinpoint her location once she snuck into the lion's den. But we're having trouble connecting to it. We suspect it's either because this frequency is biological in origin, as in they have someone who is capable of manipulating radio waves themselves, or it's not of this world, meaning we're completely in the dark. You're the leading mind on superhuman energies, Dr. Light. Can you help us? Can you help your country? I will do my best, Director Waller. For America. Nice bird. It's a military transport jet, Hawkman. A C-17 Boeing Globemaster III. Not exactly, Arrow. It's been modified by Argus, specifically for this team and this mission. It's a flying fortress equipped with an arsenal capable of taking on a small army. Mr. Green Jeans can do that himself, can't he? It also has a communications and intelligence system that's completely self-contained and off the grid, insulated by any prying eyes or virtual attacks. And the Justice League. Its airspeed is twice that of a standard C-17, breaking the sound barrier two times over. Which will do us no good if someone's superhuman senses are half as good as the Martians. They will still see us coming. No, they won't, Katana. Our plane has a camouflage mode that would fool even Superman. What do you call this thing, Gunner Trevor? I call it the Invisible Jet. Colonel Trevor. Dr. Lights managed to lock onto a signal for us. Coordinates have been received. Course is set. And for our own backyard. Superior National Forest in upstate Minnesota. Guess the society has a thing for forests. You should get there before sunrise, which is exactly when Stargirl's national radio interviews start. Stargirl? The JLA have come together under the amazing leadership of military hero Stephen Trevor to serve and protect the world as no other team can. We thank you for the opportunity, and God bless America. Where is she? Where is Stargirl?
whoever runs this show has quite the world fetish, don't they? And this... A map of the Bat Cave? Who is this? We don't want to get caught. So stick close to Vi. If there are any cameras like last time, you'll make it impossible to be recorded. You're sure the Society's headquarters haven't been moved again? We're still bouncing our signal off of Catwoman's Manhunter. She's just up ahead. Kinda hard to miss. So, how did they move this mansion from England to Minnesota in the first place? Let's go ask them. Keep to the shadows, Hawkman. We take a cue from Katana. Who is already at their front door? What are you doing here? I got turned around looking for a litter box. The bathroom is at the other end of the manor. My telepathy's still being blocked somehow. We should split up. No. Without Manhunter's telepathic link, or our comm links, we'll be out of commission. Ah! What's wrong? An interdimensional headache. Worse than a brain freeze. I can sense something. Something not from this world is behind that door. Technology, I think. This must be Ivo's robotics lab. And it looks like his Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman replicas were just the tip of the iceberg. I take it this is your office I've stumbled into, hmm? No. I am Professor Ivo. As in Star Lab's controversial lab rat. I heard you were dead. I let many believe that when my lab imploded, but I survived to continue my work. And what work is that? Did you hear something? I think it's coming from over. Something worth fighting! Ditto, bird brain. Olita is waiting. Come, Catwoman. I'll accompany you to the banquet room. A banquet? And me without a dress. <laughs> Tell you what, Ivo. How about I get changed first? Ha! Oops. Ah! Professor. You look like you're lost, Catwoman. Don't fight it now. It's easier if you don't fight. Miss Kyle. You're going to tell me why you and your friends are here. <laughs> friends? I have all sorts of friends, pale face. But no one here. You're lying. Mwah. They're downstairs, with Professor Ivo's shaggy man right now. And one of your other associates is currently assessing our unique line of communication. Subfile 12. The coin's elemental composition is strange, composed of nickel, silver, and an as yet unidentified element seemingly foreign to Earth. I'm sorry to tell you that the person you've given that coin to is about to get a rather nasty call. Dr. Light. If you don't start talking, Catwoman, I will kill you right now. Huh. Huh. Hello? If you kill me, Batman will stop at nothing to find you. Batman? Yes. Batman will come for you. 
Good. Huh. Is someone there? That's exactly what we want. All right. Let's clean this mess up. Director Waller wants a Green Lantern, Simon, not a squirrel. The squirrel is a Green Lantern, Agent Fett. The squirrel has a name, remember? But it's just based on 1014. You need to take this offer seriously, Simon. Director Waller has agreed to dropping the charges against you and publicly declaring your innocence. In addition, she's offering you membership in the JLA. This would change your life. My life's already been changed, Fed. I just got back to Earth, and my head's still spinning after fighting some kind of ancient rainbow man alongside an army of aliens. I'm still going through training with a badge. Not training, Lantern Bass. You're under observation. You pushed the ring, Sinestro's ring, to limits previously undocumented. I appreciate the offer, Agent Fed. But where I go, my pal Badge goes. Quite honestly, after all that's happened, I just want to get back to my sister and my family. I want to get back to a normal life. You okay? Yeah. What was that? I'm trying to scan for the source of the blast, but my ring isn't responding. Something's drawing our energy out of them. We need medics to the Superhuman Studies Lab. We need them right now! Something horrible has happened to Dr. Light! Catwoman is dead. Huh! Her friends are next. Professor Ivo and his shaggy man have Steve, Trevor, and his costume soldiers incapacitated and ready for interrogation. That's where you come in, Blockbuster. <sighs> Signal man, Copperhead, clean this mess up. What if Batman finds out? Oh, Batman will find out. As soon as we're done here, I'll dump Catwoman's body on his doorstep. You have Batman's home address? Yes, huh, I do. Do you think he's telling the truth? You think he knows where Batman actually lives? But more important, what do you think Batman's going to do when he finds her? I agreed to join this society for protection and get out of the jail free cards. Not to kick a damned hornet's nest. Kick one. We're going to set it on fire. But, God, you sound like my sister. Worried about something you shouldn't be. I'm with our fearless leader. Let Batman come. That's the whole point of all of this. The Secret Society has come together to eradicate the Justice League. And I trust in whatever plan he's got to make that happen. What the hell is that? What? That woman's blood is bubbling! I have heard enough. More than enough. From you. Professor Ivo, have you secured our house guest? Yes. Or rather, my Shackman has. No, <clears throat> Hawkman's not going down easy. If the JLA was able to locate us and someone else could, let alone any backup Colonel Trevor and August might have planned for. Prepare to transport the manor. So soon? <clears throat> the strain might kill him. If he dies, there are others with disabilities we can utilize, Ivo. The secret society is about the whole. That's why we've come together. And once we kill the Justice League of America, the influx of recruits begging to join us will multiply. Huh. If the Joker could see me now. Now, now, big guy. There's no need to tear up this beautiful home more than it already has been. 
Quite the vocabulary. Raw. Ruth. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that means me beat up Catwoman. Which, by the way, is not happening. Oh, look, it's my favorite Martian. I assume you want me to take Blockbuster? No, I've got him. Hey, who would have ever thought this team-up would happen? The cat and the alien. Actually, that doesn't really work, does it? No, not particularly well. I don't know how they did it, but the Manhunter's up here with Catwoman. We need your toys, Ivo. My toys are still trying to secure Hawkman. He's got a compound fracture. He's lost at least a quart of blood, but he's still fighting. Such the word, Defender Jones! No, Hawkman. This is... Pull him apart. Robots, huh? My cosmic staff specialty is dealing with them, which drives my psychic back in LA nuts. So, to recap, this is the bad guy's hideout, and it's swarming with evil droids. Anything else I miss? <sighs> Yes, you free the others. <sighs> Let me take care of the monsters. Sir, are you there? Ah! Got him, of course. Stargirl, where did you come from? Hitched a ride on your jet? I was asked to be a part of this team, Colonel Trevor. And, by definition, that means I go where my team needs me most. Which, <laughs> isn't a press room. So Director Waller doesn't know you're here? She probably does by now. Get in there! We can't let Hawkman have all the fun. Professor Ivo. Is he prepared for transport? Huh. Ivo. Don't think we forgot about you. How could I, Selena? I guess trying to shoot me in the head does put us on a first name basis. So what's yours, hon? Oh, my name is a secret. <coughs> You're the telepath. Then tell me, huh, who am I? Stop ah. whining, Ivo. It was only a glue arrow. Now, what are you trying to get into the engine room for? But let me open my mind to you. Try to read it, John. You shook those other androids apart before, Vi. Can you do it again? Something that big inside? I could bring the whole house down. If you don't, that thing will. Colonel Trevor! Well, my staff is a conduit for energy. Solar, electrical, even superhuman. It can absorb and redirect. But the hairy sticky stuff they put around this thing is doing more than make him look like a... like a... a Bigfoot instead of a robot. It's also insulating it from energy attacks. And we need to remove it. Katana, Hawkman, Stargirl needs an exposed target. Preferably sooner than later. I... I have something. Open it. Slowly, Ivo. It, it's how the mana shifts through space. It's how we move. Now, Stargirl. What the hell? 
What is it, Manhunter? Gotcha! Like me, you watched your world die. Bravo, John. Who is he? His name is Kronos. What the hell just happened? Kronos has been activated. Which means what? Talk, Ivo! Kronos increased temporal energy, a fuel who can utilize for a variety of things including personal time travel. However, on something this large, on the Mana, our energy can extend a temporal neutral field, essentially raising us in space as the Earth continues to evolve. So, the house isn't moving, the world is? And us with it. As long as we have one of these. What if we don't? You can try all you like to represent me, but I'm already shifting out of this temporal movement. You and your friends, however, will be stretched between the seconds and killed very painfully. Everybody out! Get out now! It was good to see you again, John. Let's go, Ivo! Well, we got some of their members, but the clubhouse got away. So now what? We're disbanding the JLA. Disbanding the JLA? This iteration of it, Steve. They're not capable of becoming the team we need them to be. They failed to bring in the secret society, and we still have no idea who's running it and why. But Amanda... I chose them by ability instead of character. You were right, and I was wrong. Is that what you want to hear? No. I mean, yes. It's nice of you to admit that for once, but you're wrong now, too. We may not have captured the man behind the secret society, but we brought in a handful of wanted superhuman criminals, including Professor Evo. And they rescued Argus Temporal Agent David Clinton, a.k.a. Kronos. Which means Kronos failed in his mission to locate Booster Gold. Clinton's still in an induced coma. When he wakes up, we find out what he knows and get back on the Society's trail. By the time Agent Clinton wakes up, we'll have a new team in place. Hawkman and Kaitana are too uncontrollable. They work together to take down Evo's shaggy man. Vibe and Stargirl, too inexperienced. Vibe saved his teammates, and if it wasn't for Stargirl, we wouldn't have made it back. Stargirl disobeyed a direct order. So she could do the job she thought she was signing up for. Something you throw in your superiors' faces all the time. You weren't wrong, Amanda. I was wrong. These people have the potential to be something great. They can be a real Justice League of America if we help them be. You actually think they can take the Justice League? Will you forget about the Justice League? We can get others, Steve. More professional, more experience. Black Canary, Captain Adam, Steel? If they go, I go, Amanda. You go. Go do what? Well, hell if I know, but it won't be working for you. You believe in them that much? Look, maybe today, maybe they are the world's most dangerous heroes. But given the chance, they could be tomorrow's greatest instead. All right, Steve. All right. Make them into the team you think they can be. Prove me wrong. We will. <laughs> Sometimes it's too easy. Director Wilder, Buzzler here. We finally pieced together the stained glass from the mailer. And you're going to want to see this. It's an image of Pandora's box. What? Why would the society... Should we alert Colonel Trevor? Hell no. Our former unit, Team 7, was destroyed because of that box. I'll be there as soon as I can. Like to introduce Green Lantern to the team. Uh, hey. That's Green Lantern. Well... They know the secret society exists. They just don't know why. <laughs> what a surprise that will be. How is he, Dr. Cross? 
Kronos is recovering, but... Not Cronus. How is Dr. Light? He's undergone a significant change due to the accident, Director Waller. What kind of change? Help me! Please. Help. Me. Oh, we'll help you, Dr. Light. As long as you help us. This is number one champion sound. Yeah, Estelle, we about to get down. Get down. Who the hottest in the world right now? Just touched down in London town. <laughs> Bet they give me a pound. Tell them put the money in my hand right now. Yes. Set up a motor, we need more seats. We just sold out all the floor seats. Take me on a trip, I'd like to go someday. Take me to New York, I'd love to see LA. I'd like to take you to Hi, my name is Cassie Carey, and I play Stargirl in Justice League of America. For about six solid years, I was doing theater, and I absolutely loved it. From about the age of 10, I loved it. But then around college, I got into more the behind the scenes aspect of production, such as directing and writing. Um, so that's kind of why I got into voice acting, because I was interested in being behind the scenes and kind of having a hand in creating the magic you see on screen. Um, so it was just more interesting to me than being on stage or being on camera, because I have tried like both of those before and it just didn't really flow with me. I, I much prefer being behind the scenes. I would say never stop learning. That's one of the biggest tips for me never ever ever stop learning i cannot tell you how many mistakes i still make to this day with voice acting um you know and i'm just at the beginning i'm just a year in and i make mistakes all the time whether it's like my personal business account on twitter or it's um through different jobs that i do it's i have i make so many mistakes that i think if as long as you're open to learning and growing and taking those mistakes in stride, not beating yourself up about it, I think that is a great quality to have. I would say my favorite Justice League member has to be Zatanna. I always loved her as a kid. Um, my dad and I used to play this Justice League video game that was on the PS2, and I absolutely loved her. I always played her all the time, and I never knew actually who she actually was until much later when I was doing voiceover and I discovered like, oh, that's the girl that I loved when I played this video game, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. So I just finished doing additional voices for a short film called Toe. I'm really, really proud of that because it's a stop motion animation film and I'm super, super, super proud of it. And I recommend that if you find it on YouTube or that it's coming to a film festival near you to go and see it because it is absolutely amazing. I cannot believe I was a part of that project and I'm super proud of it. Also check out Pop Tunes on YouTube. Um, I'm going to be playing Sam in Famousons, which is going to be hilarious and awesome and I love working with those guys. They've been super awesome with me and super kind to me, so definitely check them out on YouTube. Hi there, my name is Olivia Steele. I voiced Spider-Woman slash Jessica Drew for the Avengers Assemble dub. Um, I was Catwoman for the Justice League of America dub. 
uh, Warbird in X-Men Regenesis, and I also worked with Daryl on the Psychopath dub as Shinomori? I don't remember if that's the right name. I can never remember characters' names in anime. I got into voice acting mm, almost 10 years ago now. Um, I started out as a writer. I've been a writer since a very young age. And uh, I decided I wanted to voice out my, my writings because I wanted to time it. And then I realized, oh, that's kind of fun. And then I got into the, the path of video games. I, I didn't get to play many video games as a kid. And uh, I'd grown up with, you know, everyone kind of, for the most part, grows up with cartoons. And uh, so I knew who, I knew what voice acting was. Um, but then I realized online there's like, there's an actual place for it to happen. And um, just a weird series of events kind of led me to finding it. And it's a weird story, but basically I found video games. I found Let's Plays. Um, the guy whose Let's Plays I first started watching, his girlfriend at the time was into voiceover. Um, and that's just kind of how I, f I found VAA through her. Rest in peace, VAA. Um, and yeah, I actually submitted my first audition to her and it, it sucked. <laughs> uh, one to two tips for beginners. Um... My first tip is, these are probably going to be general tips, but they're really worth reiterating, I think. Um, the equipment when you're starting out, it does not matter. What matters is that you're learning, you are honing your craft, and you're just trying to put yourself out there as much as you can, and really the key is just learning. Yeah, it's great if you can splurge and buy, you know, the $3,000 mic, if you can spend the $10,000 to get yourself a nice comfy home booth, but ultimately, it really is just going to come down to your talent. Which kind of leads me to tip number two, which is you are going to probably suck when you start out. And that's kind of just with anything in life. It takes practice. You might have a really good starting point. I know some people who get into voiceover have a theater background and acting on stage, um, you probably will still have some suckiness to you, if only because it is a slightly different medium. Um, so it does take time to adjust and figure it out. Um, there is also kind of a technical aspect when it comes to having to deal with the microphone, of knowing when you're too close, too far away, gain settings, um, that type of stuff. So. I mean, I I actually, when did I do this? Maybe like a year ago, I went back and listened to my, that, one of my first auditions. And, uh, I was actually cast for that part, but man, was it rough. Oh, gosh. There was like, because when you, sometimes when you first start out, you're just so nervous that you don't modulate your voice at all. Like, you don't add rhythm to it and go up and down and shift pitches and stuff. And it just... <laughs> I mean, it sounded okay for where I was at the time, but man, I was using the the headset mic, which really, I know I said about the equipment, but try to avoid a headset mic if you can, just because in general, their sound's not very good. Um, but I had that, and then with the robotic nature of how I was talking, and it, mm, it most of us, I would say, at least 95% of us start out just sounding absolutely awful. My favorite league member. Mm, it's it's a toss up honestly. I'm I'm not super into comics so I don't know. Like I like the characters but it's not something I grew up with. Um so I, I know most of them only from like previous work that I've done. Um, but I've always loved Batman growing up. I just, I liked the idea of him of being rel- He's probably one of the most human people, I guess, on the Justice League. I can either confirm or deny because I don't know who all is entirely on the Justice League. But between like the main contenders, um, I've always liked him more because he doesn't really have any superpowers. 
aside from the power of money. <laughs> but, uh, no, I don't, I just, I think it's also because I just grew up liking vampires and he's Batman, so um, that and the Adam West TV show I used to watch before I went to school. Um, but I also, um, I didn't even realize until Daryl asked me to, uh, to voice Catwoman for Justice League of America, I didn't realize that she actually, like, joined up with them at one point, but I love Catwoman. Always love Catwoman. Again, because I really like cats, and I, I grew up with, you know, the image of her kind of following me around, and my sister used, what, what was the story? When I was born, my parents, my mom wasn't sure what gender I was going to be, my dad knew, but my sister decided that if I was going to be a boy, she was going to name me Susanna Catwoman. So I kind of always had that following me around. Um, but yeah, I've always, and she's really fun to voice too, just in general. Uh, any other characters I'm voicing at the moment that I'd like to talk about? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I also just woke up, which is a good start to the day. And, uh, but if you are interested in at least following me um, when stuff comes up, um, I try to share as much as I can. Um, you can follow me at Aurora Guinevere uh, on Twitter or just look up Olivia Steele VO. I should pop up. Um, I do have my YouTube channel, Scarily Olivia. Um, I have an Instagram at Scarily Olivia that I never use, but you're more than welcome to follow it. And um, I do have my website, which is oliviasteelvo.weebly.com, which I am in the process of renovating, so that may or may not change soon. Um, and I think that is about it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to Daryl for being amazing over the years. Always a pleasure to work with you, sir. And I hope you guys will stick around and watch for more awesome dubs. See ya!